so I'm back again. <laughs> when you ask Google about my topic, about the topic of immersive learning, you get results all about AR and VR. You will see people wearing those goggles that make you look like a scuba diver in search of their boat. But this type of digital immersive learning is extremely helpful. Medical students, for example, use it to practice brain or heart surgery with the help of this. And I think that's pretty reassuring. They don't have to try it out on real people. That's nice. <laughs> and when I say resource saving in this context, I mean it very, very literally. But I'm a linguist, so I don't do surgery and I'm not a doctor. Uh, my topic is language, so I would like to take you into the immersive language learning, into the concept of immersively learning a language. And this is not really a man-made concept or an invention. No, it's the form of learning that nature has given us, that is the most natural form of learning, <laughs> of course, and I would like to see more of this installed in our schools. Now, immersing yourself into a language requires you to do two things at the same time. You need to watch and listen. You will be surrounded by that language completely in that situation, and new words must explain themselves out of the context of the situation. And we all know that this type of language acquisition is much more natural and gives us humans much more pleasure than learning predefined and theoretical knowledge. Also, when something is done, physically done, at the same time of learning a new language, this lets the fear of speaking up in this foreign language drop dramatically, down to zero, I would say. Because when something is actively done, the focus automatically shifts away from the spoken word, away from the speaker and potential mistakes, towards this activity. And the problem of fear of speaking up in a foreign language is solved. Let's take the example of yoga, for example. Um, if you want to learn a new language, this is your target language, then why not take a yoga class in that language? Because everything that is being explained or said to you is also shown at the same time. So, everything explains itself automatically. You know, it all boils down to this simple equation. You are listening and watching and you are doing something, actively, physically doing something at the same time. That's your brain's favorite mode of learning. And I would like to add another factor into this formula. I would like to add the factor of positive emotions, excitement. If you love what you're doing, that's the booster for your brain. And yoga in your target language is just one example. The list goes on, of course. Anything you want. You could take gardening classes in a language you would like to acquire. You could do a, a hands-on DIY seminar. Gardening, I mentioned already, baking, cooking, anything. And in my little school, we do exactly this. We try and immerse the people into the activity they would like to do, and we do it in English. The courses are called English courses, yes, but what we do often involves baking or cooking. We would bake scones together, you have a list of ingredients, you have the instructions to read and to understand, you must know which the names of all the kitchen utensils you will need, so you have a natural vocabulary list. And then you can enjoy the scones together, or now in November, the pumpkin pie. And this adds the senses to your learning experience as well. You can smell the yummy scones and you can taste them. That's the booster for your immersive language learning. When we go through traveling vocabulary, I would turn my classroom into an airport. 
I have my little crafted homemade Lufthansa <laughs> check-in counter. My students would bring a suitcase sometimes or some hand luggage and we physically, actively go through the check-in process. We even pretend to weigh the luggage. <laughs> and so after this, we virtually walk through our travel destination and once a year, I take my students to London to get the real language immersion, to get the real thing. Now, after this firework of immersive language learning ideas, I would like to take you into a regular public school in Germany. And I'm not talking about a specialized language school, I'm not talking about a bilingual school, I'm talking about a regular school where 75% of all kids in this country go to. Is immersive language learning possible there? It should be, I think. Well, I was invited to do some English teaching at a regular school in Germany and I can tell you this is the past. You will travel to the past when you go there. So, you are stuffed into a room with 27, 30 kids, you, and a dusty old chalkboard, some cobwebs maybe, if you're very unlucky. <laughs> um, how much immersion, immersion is possible there? I thought, well, we could still, I mean, we could still roll out our yoga mats. <laughs> but it's not really much, because you don't only have this classical learning setting, they also came and gave me the curriculum. They gave me the marking system on top of that, how many marks each student should have when. And then they gave me the time frame in which all this knowledge must be funneled into their heads. And then you know all your fancy immersive learning ideas are killed in an instant. Okay, but you can see this was in 2001, so that's a little bit unfair now, okay? That's two decades ago, that feels like, that really feels like a lifetime ago. So, guess what? Just recently, very recently, I was called to do some teaching at a regular school in that same region in Germany again. And now I thought, okay, my last visit is 20 years ago, like I said, a lifetime. A lot of things will have changed now. I guess they will have invented the future now. So I really get back there expecting... I was expecting the Jetsons. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting Rosie the robot doing the teaching for me, zooming through the rows in the classroom. I was expecting, I don't know, the teacher's desk maybe speaking to me now? asking me if what I'm saying should be displayed to the class at the same time. <laughs> Above your head, below your head, choose the options, something like that. No, of course not. I'm not that naive. I wasn't expecting just this, but I was hoping for something along the lines of this. I was hoping for schools that are now more flexible with their facilities. For schools that don't have a problem with having an English lesson in the gym or in the school's canteen or in the kitchen or in the forest. I was hoping for much, much smaller groups of students and many more teachers per class. And I was hoping for a curriculum that not only allows immersive learning, but promotes it, actively promotes it and supports it. That's what I was hoping for. Now I come back to that school after 20 years and I find this. So, turns out, cobwebs are still there. Spider had kids. <laughs> Spider's kids go to school with our kids now. <laughs> well, it's not quite that, that bad, but the framework, the basic general setting is still the same. Even after 20 years, it's still the same. So you are still in a classroom with 20-something kids with a dusty old chalkboard and the same curriculum and the same time frame and the same marking system. So, well, but 
they did have different colored chalks now. <laughs> <laughs> so what type of learning is possible in such a setting? Only the good old classical learning, like we've had it for decades and decades and decades. And I just think this might fill our brain with bits and bytes, but it's not fun, it's not natural, it's boring and mechanical. And then I ask myself, are those kids here, do they come to school in order to really, truly learn? Or do they come to school to be taught, to sit down and to be taught all the time? And, you know, the lack of teachers is there for a reason. Because it is frustrating. It is so frustrating to have your hands tied up like this with this old framework and these old structures because the teachers do know better, they have some great ideas, and they do try and implement immersive language learning. They really do so. I have a lot of friends, and I know it. But you know, the problem is, they have to sneak it in somewhere, somehow, because the curriculum actually doesn't really allow for that, and the time frame doesn't at all. And immersive learning is also hard to mark. So you really have to sneak it in. And I think we need to change this. That can't be the way we teach the generations of the future. But this means fighting bureaucracy. This means fighting German bureaucracy. <laughs> <laughs> and I can see we all know that this is going to be a very, very long fight on a very wide battlefield with unknown grounds and no chance of winning for those who expect too much too quickly, like me. But I also do have kind of a funny sense of humor, so I thought, hmm, I might be little, but someone needs to start somewhere, right? And so I went and talked to some important people, I tried to talk to the authorities and explain to them the urgency of the situation, and we really found a starting point. So we will start with the primary schools. Because in the primary schools, the curricula are still a little bit more flexible. You can do something there. And so we start there. But you know what? We can't stop there. We need to move on. We need to take this on to all schools everywhere. And maybe, and hopefully, not only in Germany, but everywhere. And the good news is this concept doesn't require a whole lot of new technology. The schools are well equipped, I would say, with technology nowadays. That's not the problem. We don't need the next iPad. We need to get the language teachers out of their classrooms, get them in the kitchens, on a nature walk, get them in the gym. And this should be normal. In, my, in the school of my dreams, it should be normal for a child to say, Mom, don't forget my rubber boots tomorrow. We're going on a nature walk in our Spanish lesson with Mrs. Rodriguez. We're learning about nature in Spanish. That should be normal. Or that the child says, Mom, tomorrow I shouldn't forget my apron because we're baking scones with Mrs. Smith in our English lesson tomorrow. That's the school of my dreams. And so, while taking part in this fun activity, whatever it might be, with whatever language subject teacher it might be. The kids will learn that target language just on the side. They will not even realize they're learning that language. You know what I call this? I call this language learning as a side effect. And I think our kids are worth experiencing this fantastic magic side effect on a daily basis not just every now and again. And as I said before, the cost factor here is only in the staff key. That's where we need to invest. We want to have smaller groups. So as a society, as teachers, as the authorities, decision makers, and also as parents, every mom and dad, we must change our perception of language learning, of how a language is or should be acquired. We must, in our mind, we must shift our perspective from a setting like this to a setting like that one. 
I think our kids should not be there to meet the needs of the schools or the school system. No. I think we need to change the schools in order to let our kids thrive. And I really think we must start today. Thank you. Woo!